promise every video I make is not going to start with fireworks. Right, focus and yeah, looks all right, it'll do. Hi, I'm Rob, I'm a creator from Sydney, Australia and a couple of months ago, Panasonic Australia sent me the Lumix S5. And since then, I've actually been able to use it on a number of projects. And what I want to do today is actually sort of both give you my experience uh, using it on those projects, but also sort of five reasons why I think the Lumix S5 is the perfect camera for creatives. So I'm curious, have you used a Lumix camera before? If so, which one it was? So as I go through the my five reasons, maybe there's things that uh, you wanna add to it, things you disagree with, uh, do let me know in the comments below. And it's worth hanging around because I'm gonna try and fit in here some tips. And also I'll be talking about how I work with autofocus at the end. All right, so number one, sort of video and picture quality. So one of the things that's always amazing about the Lumix cameras is their picture and video quality. Uh, I don't think it's ever really been in dispute and anyone I know who's actually seen a video that's come out of a Lumix camera has always been pretty impressed with the results. So um, the dynamic range of the sensor, 14 plus stops of dynamic range, to get that out of the images when you bring the shadows out in the photo is something that's important to me. While I'll be shooting in 4K30 most of the time, it's good to know that I have 4K60 as an option with the crop. I can go up to 10 bit 422 in body if I need to. It has Vlog built in so I can get that flexibility I need in post production, as well as an external option for raw support at 5.9K. Now, if you're a creator and you're actually uh, pairing this camera with the kit lens, um, it's got an amazing 20mm to 60mm lens, which is perfect for wide shots. Uh, having that dual native ISO is amazing because you've got 640 on the lower end, and you've got 4000, I think, is the second. A native ISO, which means you're gonna get some pretty amazing low light performance, uh, even if your lens is not super fast. So I think the picture and video quality meets or exceeds the requirements for most creators like me. So the second reason is versatility, sort of the features and different shooting modes that the camera has. Uh, whenever I've picked up the Lumix camera to go out and shoot, I never have to think to myself, like, can it do X, Y, Z? Uh, the built-in time-lapse modes, the built-in slow-mo modes, the different um, photography driving features, uh, the high resolution images. The versatility camera, just being able to use it in any of these different scenarios is actually quite refreshing. And sometimes it is the specialty camera. I mean, you take out another body and it only has sort of one specialty feature. Uh, the S5 can fit any other roles. And so that's exactly what happened on New Year's Eve. We actually had nine cameras set up and we were just picking which camera, you know, could be used for each role. And the S5 could fit any of those roles. The ability for the Lumix cameras to actually take a time-lapse sequence and render that in camera afterwards, you know, as, a, as an option to, um, and then also to be able to pick the speed that that renders is something that I tell people about all the time. This is something that Panasonic have been putting in their cameras from the point and shoots right through all of their cameras. I actually used this on New Year's Eve with the S1R actually, as soon as the fireworks were done, I processed it in camera with a particular frame rate, showed the client, they said they wanted it a little bit uh, slower, changed the frame rate, re-rendered it. I mean, we had deliverables that were due within the hour, so this sort of efficiency is super useful and it comes out looking amazing. So in the other shoots that I've had, the versatility of the camera being able to flip out the screen, to be able to use the built-in stabilization and actually have it handheld without having to necessarily worry about a stabilizer. On the music video, um, we had this idea to do a slow motion shot of her running out into the light. Um, you know, it looked really cool. And then I thought, okay, let's do some stills quickly. And so the versatility of the camera just allowed me to grab it, switch over to stills, um, let the autofocuses do what it needs to do. Um, I just focused on sort of being creative and I knew that uh, the dynamic range is going to be in the raw files for editing them later on. So yeah, as you can see, um, having a camera that can just do the videos and the photos is super useful and uh, it just doesn't get in the way of your creativity. There are a whole list of other versatile features of the S5. There's 96 megapixel high resolution uh, images, being able to edit the raw photos in the camera, uh, the post focus mode, so picking point focus later on or actually focus the stacking the image in the camera. The live composite view, that was a was like six minute exposure I think from memory. The high um, speed 4K 60 photo mode, which allows you to do pre-burst photos. Some stop motion features, which are amazing for doing high lapses where you can actually line up the frame from before. For handheld long exposure photography, you have the option to turn the IS scope on. And as long as you keep that green dot sort of in that center there, the stabilization can keep up. So with that as a guide, it's possible to actually get multi-second exposures quite comfortably if you brace yourself. There's the option to plug it into power. There's the ability to now have it as a webcam. Uh, control it from your phone, control it via your laptop, and I'm sure there's still more that I haven't mentioned. If you're a creative, you sort of need your creative tool to keep up with you and your ideas. You don't want to be sort of limited by the device you're using. So the third reason I think this is an amazing camera for creators is 
customization. Let's talk about one of the most obvious ones when it comes to camera, and that is the buttons on the back of the camera. Uh, with the buttons that are there, not just the custom buttons, but some of the other buttons as well, you can just hold them down and actually a menu will pop up. So you can reprogram that to be whatever function that you want. And again, it's been in some of the Lumix cameras for a while now. It's just I think definitely worth calling out for the S5 because a lot of people may not know about it. Um, the other thing that sort of stands out to me on the S5 is um, all of the different custom modes. Now you've got uh, one, two, and three on the actual dial itself. And then under three, I think you have I'll put a number up on the screen here. It's actually a large number of different custom modes you can have. Those custom modes, you can actually give uh, a unique name. You can save those out to an SD card. It's really an amazing thing to be able to do. One of the shoots that I um, did, I was actually going to be for social media. And so I've actually got one of the framing markers up for the whole shoot. Um, I wanted to keep the camera um, horizontal the whole time just to have the full shot to be able to uh, recrop it later or reuse it as a larger asset. And there's all the, the ratios that you expect to be able to shoot with. It's amazing that Linux included those guides. Uh, a big feature for me is actually the new uh, recording marker around the outside too. Um, it's happened to me before, thought that I pressed record but I hadn't and it wasn't recording. So now being able to have the red square around the whole outside of the frame is actually amazing because it means you've got that confidence you actually are recording when you press the button. So being able to put the histogram on the screen and drag it around and the sorts of things you kind of expect to do these days. I think all of the Lumix cameras sort of built from the ground up with touch in mind. So when you are using the touch experience on the Lumix cameras, it sort of feels natural and what you'd expect it to be. It doesn't feel like it's just sort of an afterthought, something that's added on later. So just trying to think through some of the features that um, I use and like uh, that I haven't really heard mentioned in other videos is uh, the night mode, being able to turn the whole interface sort of red so that you actually keep that night vision. I think that's pretty amazing. So I think that's the real power of customization is that you know, while certain physical things about the camera are fixed, uh, when it comes to actually using it, you can change most things. Uh, the fourth reason is actually what I call the pro features. So what do I mean by pro features? Well, like the vlog built in, uh, you have sort of the HLG video with the Leica 2100 profile. Uh, you have uh, raw video support through an external recorder like Ninja 5. The camera supports anamorphic lenses. It also has, I guess you could call it a pro feature, which is dual SD cards. Uh, you've got UHS one slot, UHS two slot, um, all of the different modes can actually shoot to both cards. So you're fine there. Having dual card slots for me is kind of, I think a minimum requirement for any production at all. There's the waveform monitors. Um, another thing is it supports the XLR adapter, uh, which goes to the hot shoe on top. And for a creator who's got a camera um, that's got more features than you need, I think that's actually a positive thing because it's not like they've taken away things that you want to be able to do. They've just added more. So the fifth reason uh, is going to be sort of convenience and value for money. Now convenience because of the, the size and getting the camera with the kit lens is kind of like, you know, all you're gonna need for a lot of different productions. And the second thing is value for money. So how do you justify value for money? Well, well, first of all, having a hybrid shooting camera, being able to do still shoots and videos is gonna expand the functionality of the camera. And so when you're working out like how many shoots you need to do to actually pay the camera off if you're creator, or if you're doing it as a hobby, you know, how much should you invest in it to um, get that, stop, that hobby started? That's the equation that I used when I sort of quit my job to do this. It was always, you know, if I wanna buy that piece of equipment, what's it gonna be used for? What jobs are gonna be able to take it on? And is it actually gonna pay for itself over time? And the best part about that is you're not making any compromises because the camera can do so much. So that's my five reasons uh, that I think the camera is amazing for creators. Now I wanna give you some other tips and talk about the focusing and stuff like that, which I mentioned at the start. Now, when the Lumix cameras come sort of out of the box, live preview is usually off by default. Uh, it sort of mimics how a S, uh, DSLR camera would work. But it's not a live preview of what the, uh, the photo is gonna look like, which you can easily fix. You just gotta go into the menus and set it. So it's one of the first things that I would do. Uh, the second thing is um, a lot of people when they will use a camera, they'll have um, old habits, old things they'll go and actually do when they're setting up a camera. They might um, sort of override how the sort of focusing thing works, maybe put the spot focus on and stuff like that. Um, but by default, it will be tracking faces and animals and things like that. So let it do that work. And if you want to override it, override it. So I guess it's a good time to talk about um, my experience using the Lumix autofocus um, through the projects that I've had. Most of the time, the face to camera stuff like I'm doing now, not a problem. When I have a camera on a tripod, uh, like this scenario I'm showing here, um, you know, touching the background, touching on the product itself, racking between focus, pretty simple to do nice and smooth, you can just change the focusing speeds to be what I wanted for that particular shot. 
it's not really a problem, especially if you're used to using it. Then I get the more, most challenging scenario I think I've had uh, for the focus is probably having it on the symbol and then doing the music video clip. We're doing four minute takes where she's singing and you don't really want to interrupt that creative flow. I think I remember two times on the gimbal where um, it went soft on the face. I can either tap to focus or just came back out and re grabbed onto her face again. Not really that big of a deal. She's gonna sing the song six or seven times that day. We had plenty of time to redo the, the, the shots. So it did lose focus a couple of times. Just chop those parts out. Not really that much of a problem. I've done a lot of projects now on the Lumix cameras. I've been using the uh, contrast focus for a, a long time. And I find myself um, a lot of the time, if it is a mission critical shot, shooting manual with the focus peaking because I want to make sure that I sort of nail the, the, the focus between the points, or I lock the camera off with enough depth of field. So in a shot like this, where I've got a fixed sort of focal plane, setting the right camera settings and focal point to make sure the whole thing's in focus. You know, I am someone who does like technology and um, sees the benefits of face contrast. Let's hope that uh, Lumix can actually include that in future cameras. My generic advice for any camera is use it, play with it at home, um, go through all the options, get really familiar with it because when you're out shooting with a camera, you don't want to be thinking about, you know, where the buttons are and things like that. And if you are moving to a new system, you've got to give yourself that extra uh, leeway. And that way, um, no matter what camera you're shooting with, when you go out there, it's not going to get in the way of your creative process. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you found the video useful, please leave a like. Um, obviously, I'm going to reply to all the comments that are there. I just hope you found this video useful.